Okay, on to Act 2. Quick recap of Act 1. We found a Ragnarok very early and just took it. Next, we had the opportunity to get Omniscience. Made a lot of sense to pair the two. And then the final boss had another Ragnarok for us. So that's the central output. We do have two ways of entering Wrath as well as two ways of applying Vulnerable. Two ways of entering Calm and one way to drop a stance altogether. Throw in Flurry of Blows because all, all of our energy is going to be consumed doing our central theme here. So that will be a lot of free damage along the way. And then of course Halt gives us a little extra block. We did pluck a defend early, but now we're into Act 2, so we're going to need to be ramping up our block probably. Uh, we were lucky enough to get the Lantern, and with the Bag of Preparation we might have some pretty fine flashy first turns. Looking forward to that. So let's get started. As far as pathing, we're going to be facing the Bronze Automaton. And up past this point, you can see there's a fork in the road. Uh, elite, late shop, fire, or fire, elite fire. Uh, this also has an event rather than a hallway fight. So not sure what we do after this. But before that, here's an elite campfire and early shop. Mostly I'm looking at the early shop. Obviously we want some campfireage to be able to get our... Uh, Ragnarok's doing 50% increased of, uh, damage. Okay, so there, here we go. Um, omniscience with Eruption is going to be 50 times 2, so it really doesn't matter the order we do things in here. And then we Omniscience for Ragnarok. That's 100 damage. More than enough for these thieves. Thank you, thank you. But yeah, so with this we'll have five energy on turn one. Pretty nice. Um, Scry will probably become very valuable moving forward. And of course on the turns where we either don't have Ragnarok shenanigans or don't have the energy for it, we will want other attacks because we might have to spend our turn popping into Wrath, doing some damage, popping into Calm or whatever. You know, normal Watcher stuff because even though we have two Ragnaroks and an Omniscience, that's not going to necessarily be enough all the time. <clears throat> so let's see here. Alright, so we have Melange, <clears throat> Question Card, and of course Card Removal. I think the Card Removal goes without saying when we we'll remove a Strike. Uh, this just keeps the deck nice and condensed. Uh, not a Defend because <clears throat> our offense is very well situated. Whereas our survivability probably will not be. And it looks like we do not have enough gold for both of these. Um, Melange would give us Scry, and I do place value in Scry. But even that last fight, we didn't even get out of turn one. So we're not shuffling our deck yet. We do have a lot of power going through the deck the first time. So I think the question card is probably more valuable. So there's that. Leaves us with plenty of gold for card removal at the later shop, so that might be the way we go. We'll have to see how things shape up here. Alright, turn one Ragnarok. No real follow-up. And that's fine. No multipliers here. So we'll just go ahead and cast it, because it's more damage than these, as we've already covered. And then... We can either defend, defend, which is 13, or we can coin Vigilance, defend, which is full block and puts us in Calm, which is sort of like wrapping up the Miracle for the next time we break into Wrath. Oh no! Oh, well, we're already in Calm, so we can use this to draw cards. There we go, that's better. Alright, so Flurry of Blows first. Eruption. Halt. Flurry of Blows. Ragnarok. <clears throat> and then I'm going... Oh, never mind. <laughs> I was looking at uh, the possibility of cut through fate to like try and see things. All right, well, crush joints is another multiplier. Um, 
mantra and divinity would be another way of abusing. Um, however, we're just not getting through our deck is my problem. I would take this more for the block than the mantra at this point. So I'm just going to go with crush joints here. It's another multiplier. Alright, so now the extra strength is going to punish us. Uh, we could cut through fate to try to find a way to get into wrath. Because we would have the halt. Or maybe it's best we just end the turn in vigilance. Let's see, the Ragnaroks are hitting for five apiece. And I think if we were to flurry of blows here, that makes this a little cleaner. So let's go ahead and do this. Yeah, okay, so now we have a lot to block for. And unfortunately, there's not much we can do about that. Except for, oh yeah, we can knock off some plated armor here. Go ahead and do this. Eh, we could have done the two defense instead of vigilance. This way we take five damage. I don't know. If I could go back, would I do it differently? Not entirely sure. Alright, so this probably isn't much of a turn. Well, we could enter peace. Looking for Ragnarok. If we did... We would not be able to break into Wrath and cast it. So I think we're better off. Although, we need a way to block if nothing else. Alright. Go ahead and draw some cards. And I think maybe we break a potion here. Oh, don't have to. We broke the form. Okay. Sweet. I was ready to give us some energy. Okay. So enter calm for the draw. Nice. I wouldn't have thought of that. Meditate and third eye. Uh, meditate. Adds value to flurry of blows. Means we can use this more often for draw. Gives us energy when we break into wrath. Can fetch us a Ragnarok for reuse. Gotta go for it. It seems to fit way too well. Gotta go for it. Third eye would have been okay. Uh, we're not using any potions. We almost did. <laughs> um, we could at times like that just buy for the mo most options for potions. Because obviously things like duplication and liquid memories, for example. Even stance potion. Alright, let's get these Ragnaroks actually up to their full performance. They're already starting to feel a little weak. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ooh, this is spicy. Eruption. Omniscience for the upgraded one. So that's just lethal. We're very close. No, that's lethal. Cool. Fear potion. At this point, we're getting our key components upgraded. So I think we're better off there. Third eye. Get some scry, get some block. Alternatively, we did just pick up a meditate, so now we have more ways of getting into calm than we do wrath. And wrath is a multiplier. Not really going to have the opportunity to upgrade this, though. And at one energy, it's quite the ask. Um, ugh, scry. Hmm. Scry and block. Seems good. We do have two cut through fate. Alright, I'll give it to Crescendo. I'm just thinking we could use some card draw. We could use some scry in lieu of card draw. We could use some block. Whoa! Here's a turn. Boom. 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 And then, of course, if he survives that, we can coin inner peace. But he just doesn't even survive. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous. 
All right, ceramic fish. So whenever we add a card, we get some gold. Uh, this would be adding a card, I think, for as far as that's concerned. I don't think this is more valuable to an us than any of these, though. Wreath of Flame. Mental Fortress Plus. Cut through fate. Wreath of Flame would be a little bit awkward just because I'm trying to imagine a scenario where we, like, use it as an activator for Crushed Joints, but then Crushed Joints consumes the buff. So that would be a little awkward. We do have a miracle we can use once per fight to kind of smooth that out a little bit. But Wreath right now would make our Ragnarok Plus do an extra 30 damage. And then, of course, with Wrath, you know, and Vulnerable, that gets multiplied. So I think Wreath of Flame is the pick here. Uh, Mental Fortress. Um, we're not getting through our deck yet. I mean, I'm sure we'll start to. We are picking up more stance cards, but it's a matter of finding it, getting it down, and then going through stance cards. So far, the fights are ending kind of too quick for that, so I think this would be a better pickup later. Right now, I think the multiplier this would add, or the boost, it's not truly a multiplier. The boost, that would add quite good. What, what does that card look like upgrade? I don't even know. Eight. Okay. Fair. Fair enough. On a Ragnarok deck, that's uh, not too bad. Toy Ornithopter would be a little more uh, amusing if we were actually taking damage or consuming potions. We're not doing either yet, so... <sighs> okay. <clears throat> I'm feeling the deck size. So I think it's probably better that we go for the store even though the immediate campfire would be delicious. We still have an un upgraded Ragnarok. Oof. Very saucy. Okay, so we can pull off an AoE Vulnerable, which means this will be hitting for 18 per hit. So we put the eruption in here. There we go. Quite good. Do that, Ragnarok, and then we can halt for some of that, and then we meditate to pull Ragnarok back. He'll still be under vulnerable, so that should finish him off. We'll take nine damage here, but that should finish him off, right? We're not in Wrath. If we could get into Wrath, that would be better, but we can't, so we just got to do what we can here. Nine times six, fifty-four. Not quite lethal, but maybe Flurry Blows in the Strike gets us there. It doesn't. Oh, wait, wait, because of the Vulnerable. Yes, it does. Sweet! So, yeah, I was right to take the Crush Blows, because even the Vulnerable... Now, obviously, that was Crush uh, Vulnerable from Indignation, so I'm not trying to say the Crush Blows did it, but if we had the opportunity to upgrade it, it would, or could... Yeah, we were just talking about you. Would another one fit? Yeah, both Indignation and Crescendo are fine activators. We also have Miracle. We are heading to a shop to remove a strike. Probably not. I mean, we have two... Well... Well, okay, because we have Meditate, I was going to rule it out because I was thinking the amount of times we can cast Ragnarok and the amount of times we can multiply it kind of lined up fairly well, but with the Meditate, there's another shot at it. Plus, like I mentioned before, if we are not Ragnaroking on a turn, then it's going to be a regular turn of trying to figure out attacks and blocks. All right, let's get an event. We've been very... Oh, come on. Hallway fight? We haven't had a single event this... Yeah, we did. This one. Oh, yeah, the potion vendor. I remember now. Ooh. Oh, this is good. This is good, I think. Um, Malleable's going to get in our way a little bit. Let's see how much. Uh, this allows crushed joints to kick in, which is nice. 
And then it gives us the energy to maybe have to enter peace to get out of wrath. Oh no, that's just way lethal. Cool. I was afraid the malleable was going to mess with us a little bit. Dexterity potion. Um, energy's not been that big of a concern. This applies directly to damage output. So I think giving up this for dexterity potion might be helpful. Inner peace. Cut through fate crescendo. I think I want to go with the inner peace. Just because they can be used as draw, not just calm entry. And having two along with vigilance and meditate means that might have... We've already had times where inner peace... That, there was that one fight where inner peace got us the, form, the stance change, which gave us the energy to apply vulnerable and just end the fight. So, yeah... Alrighty, let's see here. Another halt. That seems nice. Uh, orrery. Orrery. Let's see what's in Orrery. We have the question card, so I think this gives us access to 20 different cards. And we can take up to five of them. Inner peace. <laughs> Maybe. There's a halt. Okay, so we wouldn't have to buy the one from the shop if we chose to take that. Crescendo plus if we take the Simmering Fury. Even Empty Body is not the worst at this point. We now have so many stance cards that having a second drop might be good. And I'm looking at Armor Gain, right? Oh, Blasphemy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And maybe cut through fate. Okay. Inner peace is potentially card draw, so I'm going to take that. And I'm going to be okay with being lopsided with calm versus wrath, I think. Fist plus. I was going to say empty fifth plus if we don't take the empty body, but if we don't take the empty body, I would definitely want to take the halt. Because we're just basically beefing up. I do like Simmering Fury with Meditate. It's a nice combo. But if we're spending all of our energy jumping in and out of stances, we can't actually be doing blocking and attacking. So... Wallop, we have four energy, five on turn one. I don't usually consider Wallop. It's really good if you if they don't have any armor. You're in Wrath, you get a whole lot of block. Okay. Um, and then also there's the thing where we can just buy the halt. No, we can't because we... Don't have the money for that and the card removal. Card removal is currently 100. The other one was 153. Wait a minute. If we add another card, would that give us gold? I wasn't paying attention. Um, so what am I doing as far as this experiment goes? I think we're going to try the empty body. And that did give us money. So we could just buy the halt, which means we could take the empty fist here. Is that too many empties? Yes, right, because of inner pieces. We're, if we're relying on inner piece to draw, we don't want to have too many empties. So I'll take the halt here, save the money. We could take the crescendo plus, but with the extra draw, maybe. Okay, fine. I feel bad about that one, though, to be honest with you, just because... I think the inner calms are less valuable if we are um, doing all the stuff that competes with it. What? Oh, that was awkward. 
Alright, and then we can buy the halt. Alright, I think that's good. Campfire! We have a blasphemy now, don't we? And an unupgraded Ragnarok. We do have one more campfire. So, hallway fight in between. Is blasphemy or Ragnarok more important? Probably just the regular old Ragnarok. Yeah, get the performance level up. That way we can cast one. Omniscience, uh, meditate, whatever we gotta do. Alright. Inner peace, inner peace. Crescendo. We could cut through fate to try and find a vulnerable... Didn't find it. In fact, we got stuffed. That's a shame. Alright, well, we can do this to try and find another vulnerable. We didn't find one. And now both our Ragnaroks are going to be in the graveyard, which is sad. Alright. Oh. We can just kill her now. 20 damage. Good. Good, good, good. And I will go ahead and Miracle to put us into Calm. Oh, I wasn't thinking about that, but... Uh, with all the ways we have to get into Wrath, ending in Calm is something I'd like to make an effort to do. Oh, rats. If it wasn't for that uh, Empty Blows coming back, this Crush Joints would actually be... Uh, but that's fine, because we can do this, that, that, uh, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, we're going to be crushed joints and it's just over. Okay, cool, working out, working out, crush joints again? Hmm, uh, the deck's gotten a little bloated, so I'll say yes, seems counterintuitive, huh? I'm just trying to think back. We don't want all our cards to be stepping in on out of stances. All right, Blasphemy. Now we can retain it just in time for the boss fight. Just hold on to it for it's time for lethal. Yeah, he starts off with... Uh, artifact. So we can't crush joint him. We could end in Calm. That's an energy... Three, four, five, two, three, six. So we would have to miracle just to crush joint for the purpose of removing an artifact. Will this fight last long enough for that to be important? With him summoning adds this turn, I'm going to say yes, probably. So I will go ahead and miracle the crush joints to strip an artifact. We Wreath of Flame. Uh, I'm assuming Wreath of Flame is going to only apply to the first Ragnarok here, but we can take a peek at the numbers we're seeing. All 11s, all 6s, yeah. That doesn't surprise me. Okay, so we did almost half his... Or, no, a third, a little over a third. That's fine. We'll end in Calm, both because it gives us energy if we enter Wrath and gives us our other... Inner pieces would draw for us like that, which we actually have to make use of, it would seem. So there's that. Ragnarok, eruption. So we can erupt. That won't give us vulnerable, but that's okay. Alright, so this Ragnarok's going to be spitting at 12 per. Uh, 48 plus 9 is 57, so either one of these is a good hit. In fact, let's focus on the one that's actively going to be attacking us here. We'll make sure we get the boss armor while we're here. Forgot the flurry of blows first. That's very sad to me. But we'll do that now. So I missed out on four damage this turn. But these are good breakpoints when we're spitting for 12 apiece. Yeah, didn't do any of them. That's funny. That's funny. Okay, well, let's get ourselves back into calm. And now we could... Yeah, so even the missed damage I did doesn't matter here. 
But we do have full block, so there's that. Um, I don't know how to call it from here. Probably here. We don't want to bother with him, because whatever we do with Ragnarok is probably just going to be good enough. Um, he takes our Blasphemy. Which I find to be blasphemous. <clears throat> Blasphemy is plus now. Okay, so we'll end Ignition. That brings back Flurry of Blows for eight. Crush Joints here, which means this is now lethal. Gives us the Blasphemy. Don't care for now, but... Uh, this is lethal over here. Scry, what was I looking for? Um, I forget now. Uh, empty fist. We already have empty body. There was something I had in mind, and I can't remember what it was. I keep forgetting to look at my deck before you cut through fate, because you can't actually do it here, which I don't know why. You should be able to. Right. Just do that, I guess. What was I looking for? Oh, meditate. That's right. Yeah, meditate would have been way better. <clears throat> well, we got it now. Um, but if we cut through fate, we have to draw that crush joints. Um, so let us spend that strip off an artifact while we can. That is all the block we can muster. We do this for Ragnarok, and then maybe we just have lethal next turn. That gives us some energy. There we go. 27 per hit. That's lethal. Cool. Didn't even have to use a potion. <laughs> Ended the run. Nice. <laughs> oh, no. Um, I'm taking it. You have to, right? Seriously, look at how big our deck's gotten because we've added more ways of multiplying, more ways of getting in and calm and... And, and Wrath, and doing damage, and scrying, and vulnerable, and blocking too, so it's it, it's basically everything the deck was at the end of Act 1, but more so, especially on the card draw. Thank you, Inner Pieces. I appreciate that. Uh, so yeah, I think a third Ragnarok fits. It'll increase the consistency with which we find them, the consistency with which Meditate will have one to pull, the consistency with which Omniscience can fish for one. It just won't be upgraded for a while. That is too funny. That is too funny. Oh, no. I think I totally would have taken Sneko Eye at the end of Act 1. Um, with the energy stuff we have going on and our ability to drop Calm, I don't think... I don't think that Sneko Eye makes sense here. We have too many one-cost cards, period. And we get a lot of energy from dropping out of Calm, which makes the Violet Lotus very, very, very attractive. I would, I'll, I'll stand on the hill that uh, I'm still not good enough to play with this. So I think Violet Lotus is the play here. Totally would have taken Snack away at the end of Act 1, but uh, we've already seen we're managing fine with our energy for the most part. So I will go ahead and take the Violet Lotus... And then thank you guys for joining me. It's wild, wild deck. Let me know your comments down below, please. And I will see you in the next deck. Take care.